Hello, I'm Joe and welcome to Access A-List. Now, the Cannes Film Festival is nearly over and this year has been as glitzy and as action-packed as ever. Away from the red carpet, eagle-eyed fans have been able to indulge in a game of spot the celeb as Leonardo DiCaprio and Juliette Lewis were spotted sunning themselves on a fancy yacht and Jerry Halliwell has been out and about with new hubby Christian Horner. In some more sombre news, the controversial documentary Amy about the troubled singer Amy Winehouse received a midnight premiere screening this week. However, the Winehouse family have withdrawn their support for the film. An official statement said they feel that the film is a missed opportunity to celebrate her life and talent and that it is both misleading and contains some basic untruths. There are specific allegations made against family and management that are unfounded and unbalanced. The narrative is formed by the testimony of a narrow sample of Amy's associates, many of whom had nothing to do with her in the last years of her life. Counter views expressed to the filmmakers did not make the final cut. However, there's some good news for Palestinian film at this year's Cannes Film Festival, as Degrade provides a rarely seen insight into the real lives of those who live in the troubled Gaza Strip and centers around 13 women trapped inside a hair salon while military action rages outside and follows their chatter, which eventually boils over. The film is directed by Palestinian twins Tarzan and Arab Nassar, with the latter saying, it is the situation we decided to talk about, life in general. We as Palestinians need to export it to show our lives to others. My brother believes there is a big misunderstanding about our lives. The film debuted at the International Critics Week and was well received. Another celeb spotted in Cannes was Kylie Jenner and maybe the 17 year old was trying to get away from the controversy brewing in the US over her alleged relationship with rapper Tiger. The 25-year-old hip-hop star has been criticised over his association with Jenna, with the latest attack apparently coming from his young money label mate, Nicki Minaj. In the video for her new single, Feeling Myself, Nicki sports a jersey with Pervert 17 on it, thought to be a reference to a relationship that is widely considered distasteful, and in fact is illegal in their home state of California, where the age of consent is 18. But we want to know what you think. Is Kylie and Tiger's relationship wrong? And is Nikki attacking Tiger in her video? Please leave a comment below or tweet us at Access A List. Former JLS star Aston Merigold has announced that he is about to launch his solo career. And while he said he wouldn't be busting out his trademark dance moves, he did admit he has a few tricks up his sleeve. And when asked what his solo material is like, he said, if someone else made it, I'd buy it. Making one of his first major public appearances since starting work on the album, Aston was speaking at the Ivan Novello Awards, where Ed Sheeran was also in attendance as he picked up the Songwriter of the Year Award. Ed said that during the swanky dinner, he sat next to Elton John and they chatted about their shared love of Irish singer Hosier, who was also a winner on the night. Viewers in the Ukraine were shocked this week as Syrian singer Saeed Jerdy won the latest edition of Ukraine's Got Talent. Originally from Homs, the young student left Damascus only two years ago to pursue a degree in medicine at Simferopol State University. While he was there, Jerdy decided to put his vocal talent to use and enter the singing competition. Although Ukrainian isn't his native tongue, Jerdy sang beautifully and passionately in Ukrainian and Russian, which both shocked and impressed the show's judges and viewers at home so much that it carried him all the way to the title. Now, Jerdy isn't the first Arab to enter a non-Arab version of the Got Talent franchise. In 2006, Moroccan-Algerian Salah the Entertainer won the first season of France's Got Talent. EastEnders has taken away the bulk of this year's British Soap Awards back to Albert Square. The Wolford set drama, which celebrated its 30th anniversary back in February, picked up eight prizes, including Best Actor for Adam Woodjack, Best Actress for Kelly Bright, and the hotly contested Best Soap. As he collected the Best Actor trophy, Woodjack, who has been with EastEnders since its first episode, thanked show creators Julia Smith and Tony Holland for giving him the job over 30 years ago. Coronation Street, which last week took home the BAFTA for Best Soap, won two awards, Best Comedy Performance for Sally Deneva and an outstanding achievement for Anne Kirkbride, which was collected by the late actress's husband, David Beckett. And some sad news now as blues music legend B.B. King has passed away at the age of 89. He was known for hits My Lucille and Sweet Little Angel and is due to be buried in his hometown of Indianola, Mississippi next week. Tributes have poured in from fans and public figures alike, and one moving homage came when the Rolling Stones 
played a cover of Rock Me Baby at a Los Angeles concert this week. Fittingly, King will be buried on the grounds of the BB King Museum and Delta Interpretive Center, which opened in 2008 and celebrates the cultural heritage of the Mississippi Delta, where blues music was born. As always, we finish with films, and here's this week's new releases. First up, Tomorrowland is the story of a scientifically curious teen and a former boy genius who embark on a danger-filled mission to unearth the secrets of an enigmatic place somewhere in time and space that exists in their collective memory as Tomorrowland. Basically, it's a bit hard to explain, but it's got George Clooney in it and it's full of Disney wonder. However, with a running time of over two hours, many critics have said it does drag a bit. Poltergeist 3D is a retelling of the 1982 horror classic about a family whose suburban home is haunted by evil forces who must come together to rescue their youngest daughter after the apparitions take her captive. To be honest, it's pretty bog standard jump scary stuff, but the 3D does add a bit of a squeal factor. Definitely a fun one that shouldn't really prove too mentally taxing. And finally, something very different. We Are Many tells the story of the biggest demonstration in human history, which took place on the 15th of February 2003 against the impending war on Iraq. It features testimony from prominent figures such as Damon Alburn, Richard Branson, and quite stunningly from former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, who flat out admits that Tony Blair and George Bush are war criminals. It's a stunning insight into a decisive moment in recent history, and it's our pick of the week. That's it from this week's Access A-List, and as always, for all the latest showbiz news from all over the globe, check out levant.tv and follow us on Twitter at Access A-List. Now, this week, we thought we'd play you out with the trailer for San Andreas, the story of a rescue helicopter pilot trying to save his daughter in the face of an unthinkable disaster. It stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson and is in UK cinemas next week. I'm Joe. See you next time. This whole chunk of land will be decimated. Are you saying the whole San Andreas fault might go off? Everybody down! Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. We are going now! I'd be safe from war If I was an island We can't stop it, we can't prepare for it It will be a global event